Often in chemistry, we need to determine the solubility of a compound, whether it's soluble or insoluble. So there are two main ways to determine solubility. You can memorize the solubility rules, or you can use a solubility table. In this video, we're going to focus on learning and practicing the solubility rules. So here's a condensed list of the most common solubility rules. We'll start with these. So you're given a compound like KCl, potassium chloride. You want to know if it'll dissolve in water, if it'll dissociate or break apart into its ions. So let's look at the rules. The first rule on our list says that group 1 elements are soluble. So on the periodic table, when we look at group 1, these are the alkali metals. These red ones right here, this is group 1. These ones here, they're always going to be soluble. So we have our K, our potassium ion here, attached to the chloride ion. That means KCl is soluble. So pause for a moment and determine which of these compounds are soluble. So the first compound, we have Na. That's going to be soluble. Same for the second one, sodium hydroxide. Even though it's a hydroxide, it's a polyatomic ion, doesn't matter, it's still soluble. And then lithium, that's also in group one, soluble. So all of these are soluble. And if they're soluble, we write Aq after them. Aq, that stands for aqueous. Our next rule is pretty straightforward. If it has NH4 in front of it, it's going to be soluble. NH4 plus, that's called the ammonium ion. So, for example, if we had NH4Cl, because we have this NH4 in front, it's a soluble compound. So pause for a moment and determine which of these compounds are soluble. So as we look at the compounds, we see we have an NH4 here, this NH4Cl, ammonium chloride, that's soluble. And then NH4 2, SO4, doesn't matter that we have two of them, it's still soluble. And then you might remember that Na, that's one of those group 1 metals, that makes this soluble as well. We haven't learned about these yet, but it turns out that both of these compounds are insoluble. That means they would be solids when we put them in water. At this point, you might be asking, how do we know that it's Li plus or NH4 plus or Br minus? There are two ways we can know. If it's a monatomic substance, like just one atom, we can use the periodic table to determine that. Here on the table, group 1, those should be 1 plus. Group 2 should be 2 plus. Likewise, when we come over here, we have 3 minus, 2 minus, and 1 minus. So we can look the charge up on the periodic table. If it's a polyatomic ion, it has more than one atom, like NH4 plus or NO3 minus, we can look that up on a list of common polyatomic ions. Some teachers may require that you memorize this list. Check with your teacher. So those are the two ways we can determine ionic charge. For our next rule, the nitrate ion, NO3 minus, they're generally soluble. So pause and determine which of these are soluble. So we said anything with the NO3 minus, the nitrate ion, that should be soluble. Ammonium nitrate, that should be soluble. Potassium nitrate, and then calcium nitrate, those are all soluble. You might remember AgCl, that's not soluble. We'd write S for solid after that. PBI2 the same. That's not soluble. For these, we'd write AQ for aqueous. For the fourth rule, we see that Cl minus, Br minus, and I minus, they're usually soluble. These are called the halogens, sometimes the halides. There are a few exceptions. Ag plus, Pb2 plus, we've seen those before. Those will be insoluble. And remember, on the periodic table, the halides, they're right here, the yellow, all together. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So pause and give these a try. Well, by now, we've seen AgCl, that's a solid, and PBI2 enough to know that they're insoluble. They're solids. But what about the halides here? So we have Cl, that should be aqueous. It's going to be soluble. And then we have Br, that should be aqueous as well. Plus, it has that ammonium ion in front, so we know it's going to be soluble. And then finally here with magnesium nitrate, remember, nitrates are almost always soluble. So we'll put a little AQ after that. Rule 5. Most sulfates are soluble. Remember, sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So if it has SO4 2 minus, it's probably going to be soluble, except these exceptions here. And remember, we see lead and silver already, barium calcium, and strontium, when attached to a sulfate, those won't be soluble. So pause and give these a try. 
So we see a sulfate here. We think it might be soluble, but it's attached to that silver. So this is insoluble. We're going to write an S for solid. Sodium sulfate, that should be aqueous. Magnesium sulfate too, aqueous, because sulfates are usually soluble. For calcium sulfate, that's one of the other exceptions. That'll be a solid that will not dissolve in water. And then, of course, our good friends, lead to iodide and silver chloride. Let's talk for a second about the solubility table. On the solubility table, we have our positive ions here and our negative ions here. So if we wanted to know if calcium sulfate was insoluble, we'd find calcium and we'd find sulfate and we'd go across here and we'd find SS. And what does that mean? SS, that means slightly soluble. For many things like net ionic equations, we consider that insoluble. But you can see from the chart the general trends. Most of the bromides, the Br minuses, that's one of those halogens, they're soluble except for, there it is, silver. Same for chlorine. We can look at things too, like the nitrates, and those are all soluble as well. Sulfates, many of them are soluble. A few are just slightly soluble. So this is another way we can think about solubility. Memorizing the rules, though, that's usually a lot quicker. But unless you're allowed to use this chart on the test, you're going to have to memorize the solubility rules. The last major rule that we're going to look at is that most hydroxide salts are only slightly soluble. When we say hydroxide, we mean the OH minus ion. It's a polyatomic ion. It's really one that you need to memorize. So hydroxide ions tend to be only slightly soluble. There are a few exceptions. If you have ammonium hydroxide, that'll be soluble. And then those group one, lithium, sodium, and potassium, those are soluble. And that brings up an important point. These rules here at the top of the list, they're most important. So while we say that most hydroxide salts aren't soluble, if they have these ones here, or the ammonium, they're soluble. Pause and give these a try. So let's just get AGCl and PBI out of the way immediately. You see those a lot in chemistry. Then we could see that NaOH that's one of the exceptions. We have that group 1Na. So that's going to be aqueous. Calcium hydroxide, not an exception. So we're going to say that that's not soluble. It's insoluble. It'll be a solid. Calcium sulfate, that's from a while ago. Remember, sulfates in general are soluble, but calcium, that was an exception. So that's going to be insoluble. We'll write S. Down here, magnesium hydroxide. Hydroxides are sparingly soluble. So we're going to put a solid here for that. And then we have ammonium hydroxide, one of our exceptions, the ammonium ion. That's going to be aqueous. So that's the last rule here on our list. But let's take a look at a few other rules you might see out there. So sometimes you'll see the solubility rules listed in a table. We know most of this. We know ammonium ion. There's no exceptions. It's always soluble. Nitrate, we know that. A new one is that chlorates, ClO3 minus, they're usually soluble. Acetates, also usually soluble. All right, those are new. For insoluble compounds, we've added to the list carbonates. That's at CO3 2 minus. So in general, they are insoluble, unless you have the ammonium carbonate compound. We also have sulfides. That's new. Sulfides are, in general, they're insoluble, except with group 1 or ammonia. Same for phosphates and same for chromates. Check with your teacher to see which ones you have to have memorized. And if you're lucky, you can use the solubility chart we talked about earlier. So these are the basic rules you really need to memorize and have them ready in your brain for easy recall. For other rules, again, check with your instructor. See which ones you need to know. The key to memory, though, is practice. You need to practice this quite a bit. So at the end of this video, there's a link to practice videos that will help you really get this down cold. This is Dr. B with the solubility rules, and thanks for watching.